Well, good morning and welcome to Zen Fits. Beautiful Sunday morning in Blackstone. I got my old meditation shawl out of my cedar trunk and I figured it's kind of cold, chilly in the morning when I get up here in the big old house in Blackstone. And so I put on my shawl, you know, like, uh, <laughs> and you can, this, this shawl, look at this, see the, I just know, that, you know, just look at the, the moth holes in it. I mean, this shawl, is, was my first meditation shawl. I got it. it it's probably 50 years old. And uh, so why I leave it in the bottom of a cedar chest? Well, you know, why not use it? So I brought it out. You know, if you don't, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. So anyway, let it, let, let it just deteriorate. <laughs> and uh, so the title of this talk today is uh, to uh, remember how you forgot. Um, as you get older, as everyone knows, you forget more. Uh, and everybody, oh my God, it's the first sign of dementia. Or Alzheimer's is coming, oh my God. I keep forgetting, I keep forgetting. Well, I'm 83 and, and I do forget more often. However, as a, as a long time meditator and, practice in, of, and practitioner of mindfulness, I've discovered that while I may forget more, I remember faster. So that, it's, it's almost like, there, so if I, if I uh, am going to the store and I forget the shopping list, I don't remember it when I get to the store. I find that I remember it before I leave the kitchen. So it's very interesting. And uh, I also wanted to share with you another little um, uh, in in uh, uh, what you a practice you can do, because we're always doing this. My wife, myself, you, you, you come into a room and you say, "Wait, I forget what I came in here for." What? And it's kind of perplexing, you know. Uh, but let's pull this. Uh, let's let's pull this cotton ball apart. <laughs> so pull, get the seed out of it. You pull it apart. There's a seed in there, a seed of insight. So let's pull it apart and see what the insight is. Well, here's one thing you can do and understand that you're in one room and you say, oh, I need to get some scotch tape. And you go through a door into another space and you forget that you needed scotch tape. So here's what you can do. You go back into the room where you had the inception. The idea I need, because that's where it is. You, it didn't get through the portal. It didn't get through the uh, the, the gate at the airport. You see, uh, it got checked and left there. It didn't fit. You didn't carry it through the portal. So you go back. The idea is still there. You just didn't take it into the other room. So try that. I mean, it's a practice. See if it works for you. It works for me. Worse from my wife, from my wife, she she's always doing that. So it the idea is to uh, return to the source, um, so that uh, not nothing is uh, it, the idea uh, of getting the scotch tape uh, didn't evaporate. It's still there. It made an imprint. You see, you just didn't get it through the portal. So we're always going through uh, portals. You know, from one like I'm in this room here. And I get the idea that I need some scotch tape. Well, this room shapes my mind. But when I go through the portal, I'm in another room. It has a different shape. You know, it's like going from one fishbowl to another. And the room that we're in shapes the mind. We don't see that, but it does. The world we're in shapes the mind. We shape the room. What we're, we shape the room, and the room shapes us. It's like an art, you know. Uh, we shape, we create the world, and the room creates us. It's an interaction. It's an inner, a co-creator of ourselves with the world. We don't see that. We don't. Our, our particular worldview doesn't uh, compute that. Doesn't see that. It's not on our map. We think the world exists outside of us, like it does, and we're kind of like like a, a marble bouncing around on a uh, pinball machine. Boom, 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 boom. The pinball machine of the world exists outside of us, we believe, and we're just lucky or unlucky according to how we 
bump. We're either bumping light up or we go in a hole. We don't, we don't see, we don't understand, we can't un understand or compute or realize, you know, that we are the pinball and the pinball is us. You can't have that pinball without the pinball machine. And what good is the pinball machine without the pinballs? You see, they go together. The pinball and the machine, you see. But in our worldview, they're separate. So we're always trying to, oh, damn, I fell in the hole. Oh, I hit the light. I got the lottery. Yay. <laughs> so you go into another room, you see. Um, the mind that shaped the idea, the mind that created the idea that I need that uh, scotch tape, for instance, if you go in the other room, um, the mind has a different shape. And you look around and say, where am I? You know, it's kind of like uh, you've gone through a portal into a different world. Where am I? What am I doing here? What, who am I? We don't even know who. When we forget what we're doing, we don't even know who we are. We've, because we're so uh, indoctrinated to think that I am what I'm doing, going to do in the future. That's why, uh, what do you, I got to go shopping. I got to do something because I, if, if I'm not doing anything that's orientated towards movement into the future, I don't know who I am. I have, <laughs> so that's because we have been conditioned to believe that I am what I'm going to do. You got to do something. Uh, what do you do? Well, I'm a plumber. Okay, well, whatever. What do you do? You see, so we, we believe we are what we do, but what we do is in time. Going from one room to another to get something. Going from the present, this room is the present, that room is the, from this room, that room is the future. But then when I get there, that's the present. So we're always in the present room, but we think we're always going from one room to another. The room, the better room, is always the other room. Even when we die, people say, well, he's gone to a better place. He's gone to a better room. This one sucks. So we're always thinking, we just live that way, you see. So as we get older, naturally that whole structure begins to fall apart because it's sustained by effort. It's sustained by belief, you see. You get to the other room and say, who am I? I don't know, what am I doing here? You're still you, but now you've lost that intention of being some intention being some idea of being better than you are right now when you get this or do that or find this or lose that or whatever, you see? So we're like conditioned to live in time, but as we age, we become more now. And when we were constantly forgetting who we are, because who we are is a fiction. <laughs> who we are is a fabrication, a cultural conditioning to believe that I am what I'm going to do. And I must do something or I won't exist. That's the thing, you see. And that's why, you know, aging and retirement is so traumatic because you're no longer doing anything. You don't have to get up. I don't have to do anything today. Who can live with that, you see? So we, you know, we feel like useless. I'm left behind. I don't have any existence, you see, if I don't have any purpose or intention or movement, you see. But the whole movement of meditation is towards not movement. So when I put on my meditation shawl for meditation in the morning, I practice not moving. I practice not having any intention. I practice not going anywhere. I practice, uh, where's my little thing? Uh, my prop, you see. I'm like Glenn Black, Beck, you know what I mean? Always had a prop. So here's the prop, you see. Here's the, the merry-go-round, you see. That's in time. I'm on this horse, and I want to get to that horse. So I'm moving on that, you see. And the horses, oh, the horses are going up and down. High, low, happy, sad, hot, cold, up, down, going around and around. But the center, you see, is still. So meditation is practicing finding the center and restoring and restoring your being that is not dependent upon being. It's okay to be on the merry-go-round. I mean, we have to be on it because the world is a merry-go-round. You can't get off the world until you're dead. 
So the world is a merry-go-round, but we don't understand it from the center. We only understand it from being on the merry-go-round, riding a horse up and down. That horse is better than mine. I should get on that horse. That horse is bigger. I'm on a bad horse. I want to get on the big one. So we fight and we run around the merry-go-round getting on different horses. But it's all, all going up together, round and round and round, you see. So meditation is the realization that life is a merry-go-round. I'm not going anywhere. So I remember that. So, med so like meditation is a remembrance that this life is a merry-go-round. It's really a playground. It's a kid's game. It's fun. It's play. Because it has no purpose. <laughs> it's just going up. You go, kids get on a merry-go-round. Children go get on a merry-go-round in the playground or at the park. It has no purpose. You're not going anywhere. They know it. But it's fun. Why is it fun? Because you play on it with the realization that it's a metaphor for life. This is a physical metaphor for life. That going to another room does not make you better than you are in this room. <laughs> no matter what room you go to, what future you go to, you're still going to be you. You're going to take you with you. So the game of forgetting, getting back to my point, is the game of Remembering that you are who you are, not your intention of what you were supposed to get in that room. So the, the, the wisdom here is that when you go to the other room and you forget why you went in there, instead of saying, oh, no, 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 this is, I'm getting old, I'm getting dementia, this is the first sign of Alzheimer's, oh, no, why can't I remember it? Ooh, try to remember that name. Ever try to remember a name? What is that movie star's name? And you can't remember it, and then you, oh, and then maybe five minutes later, oh, there it is. It pops up in the hole of relaxing, trying to remember. So when you relax trying to remember, what you're trying to remember pops up. So you have to, so one of the, the the practice, and I'll end here, the practice then is just try to see if it works. Go back to where you first had the inception of the idea, the other room, and see if it's there. You know, be curious. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for dropping in and having a Zen fit with me.